This is a continuing series of ELMs on how to use the Drive Wizard mobile app. Hi, I'm Bob Bonzar with the Escawa Technical Training Department. In this section, we will see how to use the Smart Operator. From the menu, select the Smart Operator. Now decide to select USB connection or the Bluetooth in this case, we'll choose the Bluetooth. The tablet will search for the connection to the drive. Please refer to the previous ELM on how to get connected. Now see your drive and select it from the list. Once it connects, it will display the drive information. Select Yes to continue. The first display it shows is the monitor group, U1. These are the frequency reference, output frequency, current, input and output I.O., and analog inputs to name a few. In the upper left hand corner, click the U1 operation status monitor to see the other monitor list available. These features are also available from the Drive keypad. The Drive Wizard Mobile helps to expand and give you fuller text with the mobile device's display. Now let's see the fault trace in U2 group. It takes a snapshot of conditions at the time the last fault occurred. You can see voltages, currents, and other displays at the time it occurred. This will stay until the next time that another fault occurs. That way we'll know what happened in case someone resets a fault. This is helpful in troubleshooting. The next one in the list is the fault history under U3. This captures the last 10 faults that occurred and timestamps them based on the hours of operation. The next group is the maintenance monitors group U4. Here we can see the amount of time the drive has been in operation. We can look at component usages, such as fans, capacitors, or IGBTs. We can even see the heat sink temp. Good information if it might be approaching a time for a PM. The next group, the U5, has to do with PID information. So if the drive is set up to run in a PID mode, we can see these things like set point and feedback, for example. The U6 group, this is the operation status. Very similar to the U1 group, just additional information. The next group is the U8. These are DWEZ, or Drive Works Easy monitors. These are only available if you're using DriveWorks EZ. So in this case, I don't have any set up. Now if we click the three horizontal lines in the upper left-hand corner of the display, we can access additional features of the Smart Operator. So from the menu, the first one says Return to Home. We'll talk about that later. We don't need to do that right now, because if we click on it, it will disconnect from the drive. The first on the list is the display monitor, which is what we started with. Now if we select display wave, we can capture a data similar to an oscilloscope. If you follow the instruction, select the setting icon, then select the feature of the signal you want to monitor. In this case, I selected the output voltage from the U1 monitor list, that's U106. Now select Start. It will pull up the trace setting, sample rate, plots, and so forth. 
So go ahead and click Start. We'll give the drive a run command, and it's running. You can see the update of the trace. You get a graphical representation of the monitor U106. Here we see the voltage increasing with the frequency as it increases up to 60 Hz. And here we'll push stop. We can also select from the upper right corner ways to save or export this data. You can expand the menu selections which are available by clicking in the upper right or the upper left of the menu that you're in. The next selection is parameter change. This allows us to access drive parameters directly. So we can pick anything from the drop down. In this case, for example, I'll select acceleration time C1-01. Now if we make an edit to this, we can see that it's been updated and the color indicates the modified value. We can also display favorites. This is done if any of the parameters have had the star selected on the right. If the star is highlighted, then the parameter will appear in the favorites list. This might be useful if you have a core list of parameters that you're using and to set up in a drive and want to make your own customized shortcut. Display modified parameters is our next selection. This shows the parameters that have been modified from the defaults. If a parameter is set back to its default, then we won't see it in the list. Our next selection is operation history. The operation history keeps a history of parameter changes made using the app. So we can see the last thing we did was edit the acceleration time. Now there's auto tuning. It allows us to tune the drive for the attached motor. These are the T parameters and we'll only display them in this menu. So we can select a rotational or stationary from auto tune. If we select the rotational, we need to be careful to remove any sort of coupling or belts, and also we need to stand clear of the rotating shaft. If all is clear and safe, then we can agree to the warning and proceed. Now we can populate the parameters that are required based on the actual motor nameplate data. Things like motor capacity, current, voltage, frequency, speed, things from the nameplate. Once we've updated this list, then we're ready to auto-tune. Once the auto-tune is complete and successful, we can also see the parameters that were changed in the modified parameter menu. To reemphasize, the screens that we've seen in this Drive Wizard mobile app are the same menus that we see in the Drive's keypad. So it may not always be necessary to use the Drive Wizard mobile app. It's just more convenient from the screens with the text and ease of use. Now finally in our list is the Parameter Manager, but we're going to get to that in the next video.
Thank you for watching and see additional ELMs in the Escawa website under training.